Hey, bonjour, quoi, quoi. Hello, it's Catherine from Moonstar Lodge in Central Ontario, bringing you our Indigenous perspectives, where Moonstar Lodge is celebrating its 40th year. We specialize in Indigenous uh, spirituality, arts, and education. I have loved and worked with tarot for Oh, since 1974, so that's a very long time, almost 50 years, and divination, parapsychology, psychology, and I'm a licensed minister. Um, so I say that if you're new to this channel, and um, for the old friends, you know all that stuff. Um, this is a video for the week of August 29th to September 4th, which is the day before Labor Day. That's quite wild. Today is the new moon of Setting Sun Woman, and Setting Sun Woman is the ninth moon cycle, and she brings to us the accelerated uh, decline of the daylight to the point where um, we have autumn equinox on the 21st. So this new moon energy has put me in a very woo-woo liminal space today. It's been very, uh, I've been very aware with the reading I did for the weekend um, of the 27th and 28th. And now it is still um, the day to be uh, doing this reading to put up for the 28th and it's still new moon day. So I'm really feeling the vibe of walking between the worlds. So the decks I'm using, um, let me lay them out here. You can flip the camera, Brian, please. I'm using the Hero's Journey Dream Oracle, the Earth Alchemy Oracle, the Spacious Tarot, and I'm using the supplemental cards, the extender pack, the Marigold Tarot for the Ancestors, and the Liminal Spirits Oracle. So let me get those out of the way. All right, so here's our Spacious Tarot. Here's a card from the extender pack of that. Um, it's a, a general clarifying card. Here's the Earth Alchemy card. Here's the Marigold Tarot, and I pulled that to represent the ancestors. Here are two of the Hero's Journey Dream Oracle cards, and here are the Liminal Spirits cards for this reading. So, let me kind of give you a picture of what's going on here, and then we'll tie in these clarifiers. Um, the Child of Cups shows up again, and that's interesting because with the amount I shuffled the deck between the weekend reading and the reading for the week, uh, this card came up for a second time. So this Child of Cups is a little fish poking its eyes out, looking at the bigger world beyond the water. It's the same as the page, and this is... Uh, seeing with in innocence um, new situations. So this is our significator, actually. So we're seeing with fresh eyes um, a situation that we are beginning this week and we are going to move through. It picks up pace for us, though. We become the explorer, the same as the Knight of Wands. So we move through from the innocence to finding the passion, the fire, and spirit for a journey that's going to go with the Eight of Wands here. Like lightning, it's going to flash, and uh, we will be experts, experienced in where this journey is taking us. And it's interesting because midweek we go from the fire to four swords. And uh, I actually had Brian Douse and asked the spooks, did I shuffle this well enough because I get four swords in a row. So here's the 
child of swords, the same as the child of cups, but the child of swords is about um, seeing things with beginner's mind very clearly, uh, no emotional um, garbage or, or baggage, and in fact the, the crow or the raven is looking between its legs to see this um, sword from a new perspective. So this is beginner's mind and this is an innocence, no baggage and clarity. Moving to the guardian of swords where we have, that would be the same as the queen, she brings her capacity to see with a clarity and a wisdom. So this is innocence and this is wisdom. She knows which tree to cut, she does it clearly, there's um, no emotionality to it, does what she needs to do. And we want this queen's wisdom, this guardian really, she's the guardian here in this deck. Because we have the Ten of Swords, so there's that stump that's been cut and there's no need to keep at it with these Ten Swords. The situation is clear and dealt with. You don't have to keep ruminating over where you're moving this energy or you're going to be at a standstill. So don't spend too much time in your head. It's finished. It's done. What you need to be doing is finding an agreement, finding a balance. The historic meaning of, of this card uh, was to find truce. So to bring the situation to a truce and a state of balance. This balance is evident in a number of these clarifying cards and I'll touch on that now. This is quite introspective. This is quite um, externalized. So you're bringing a maturity into this new venture, uh, a great deal of clarity, viewing things from different objectives, knowing when to stop overthinking about it, get out of your head and just bring it to a balance. There's a seriousness to this. But at the same time here, the clarifiers bring us the liminal qualities. So here we have Virgo. <laughs> what a surprise. Um, this card indicates that we, you know, we don't need to get into the state of per uh, perfectionism about what we're doing here. That's not balance. Perfectionism is a, a Virgo trait, but it's preciseness. This card is really asking us to be precise, like the Queen. So it very much acknowledges this Queen energy um, or guardian of um, swords. Here's where we shift into, with that clarity, we can move between the worlds because we've got Fulgurite and Rose Bay Willow Herb and it's regeneration, very much air. So this is about acceleration, change and shamanic wisdom. So Fulgurite is created, <clears throat> excuse me, as when lightning hits the earth and Fulgurite stone uh, emerges um, and is created so it brings the element of acceleration to what you're doing. So it ties in here with our Eight of Wands in a lovely way. The Rose Bay Willow Herb is often called the Thunder Plant in Indigenous uh, culture. So it's very much thunder and lightning. Um, these are Manadus and these, these are the tools of the shaman. So you're bringing the wisdom of the shaman, the ability to move between worlds really, and that energy because crows and ravens are messengers between the worlds and these two sit here, uh, it's the call to the shaman. So these, the clarity requested of us by the guardian and the seeing with the beginner mind of this child of swords very much fits into how the shaman works. Now the ancestors card is the lovers and the lovers is about um, choice and it can be the balance between 
the male and the female, the animus and the anima within us. It can be the love of the balance in the situation, which this is requesting of us here. Um, it can be the inclusion of another in our journey this week. So the ancestors are saying to bind with them as well. This is about remembering the love of the ancestors so there are spirit selves connecting with us. They're the, uh, another part of us. We're still on the physical journey. So there's a lot of overtones to this particular card as it relates to their support of where you're headed. That says to me this is karmic and it has to do with the Akashic Records. This card came up next and it is a um, person standing in a cave and they are being held in an embrace and its X marks the spot. See the love in disguise. So this is ancestor love. This is seeing where sometimes um, rejection is the universe's protection where you might get really annoyed about something that you feel is being withheld from you, but sometimes that's a gift. There is love in the situation, so that's bringing the emotion back to this highly intellectual aspect. So you've got this partnership and, and these two beings held in the light. The light is very much a part of this. The light appears here in this card. This is the thin, thin veil. Let go and let glow. So this is a tunnel, a pathway. There's another pathway here. And the light is at the end of this. The veil is getting thinner and thinner. As we get into warm, um, hot, still days, but cooler, crisp nights, that's when you know the veil is thinning and spirit can pass. What Spirit is asking us as we connect and make point on point here with these issues is to embrace the crystal realm. The crystal realm is the thing that shamans use. So here's our shaman card. Crystals are created with the energy. They balance the energy. Now these specific crystals are... Um, regular quartz, silicon dioxide, so they're part of the hexagonal family of crystals and when um, a, a piezoelectric charge or if they're held against a battery, they resonate to 7.86 cycles per second, which is our mind in alpha when we are meditating or in prayer or doing yoga or connecting uh, in nature. It's um, our mind when we are relaxed. It's also the basic core general energy of most of the earth. And these silicon dioxide crystals are the ones that the shaman journey with. So apart from the fulgurite, which would be the opposite energy here, this is activation and this is calming. It's a, a very strong suggestion to me that you need to get both crystals happening this week in order to create the balance in order to create the energy and in order to create some stillness and awareness. The final card here is the desert. This is um, various, uh, variously apropos to the week. Deserts are extremes. Um, it, it's not in balance, but it's very much a yin-yang thing. It's very yang uh, energy. The saguaro cactus are considered by many indigenous cultures to be ancestor spirits who stand tall and protect the desert. The desert can be, uh, by first appearance, very empty and devoid of life. And it takes the person to go into the, the subliminal, not just the liminal, but the subliminal, um, vision space as the shaman would to go beneath that surface and recognize how much life is in there. This can be a warning about how quickly you um, 
proceed. So this is kind of tempering this card, actually both of these cards. It's interesting to me that the coloration is very similar. But um, you are expected to move forward on a very powerful spiritual venture. Here's your spirit, here's your emotion, here's your intellect all in balance. And you have these earth elements to use as conduits between the dimension, or dimensions, plural. So um, you can flip the cards, Brian. Um, I warned you that this would be quite a woo-woo reading on this new moon day. But just know that uh, th there's a guidance in here that's available to all of us. Whatever our particular you know, idiosyncratic journey is in this coming week. It's very profound and we are moving the planet forward. There's an awful lot of uh, earth energy here in the sense of connecting with um, nature. So use this time wisely and have a great week. Um, blessings to all of you. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Please leave a comment. I answer all the comments. And um, if you're so inclined, throw me a coffee there on the link below. Anyway, blessings to all of you. Miigwech. Nyawe. Aho.